Right, we okay? So we're on the third video, so we've got three, quite big examples of this to be honest. So the third video or the third lesson. So we're hitting around the 15 minutes of stuff that we've done at home. So that's not too bad, is it really? Right, so what does it tell us then? So it says a curve C has an equation y equals x squared plus 4x plus k, where k is a constant. So it says the equation has two distinct negative roots. Great. Sketch C on the axes. So if you've got two distinct negative roots, and it's a U shape, because it's x squared, I know it looks something like that. I know that that would be K there. So it says, find the range of possible values for K. Fully justify your answer. Huh? Right, so let's have a think about it. So imagine if K is negative. So it crosses below the x-axis. So if it crossed below the x-axis, I wouldn't have two distinct roots. So two distinct negative roots. The first point where I get two distinct negative roots is anything where the k is positive. So k has to be positive to get the two distinct roots on the left hand side. So I kind of hope you can see that from the picture. So if k was negative, then it would be one on either side. So the only way to get the roots on the left is if k is positive. So that's telling us that k has to be greater than zero. So if k is like 0 0.001, it'll put the roots, both roots on the same side. If k is zero, we'll put one of them on the origin. And then you've got to argue the fact. Is zero positive or negative? So we don't want that. So that's one value that k is greater than zero. Now I've got to think about the other one. At the moment, if I move this graph up and down, like that, oh, it's quite good. I can show you. Look, see, look. So if I go down a little bit more, it's negative. So at that point there, when k is zero, I've got one root which is negative and the other one's the origin. So whereas if I have it on this side, there, I've got two roots. Now I want to keep on going. If you imagine, if I keep on going, hold on, I'm not moving the axes instead of the graph. If I keep on going, I get to where I've got a repeated root, and that's when it switches to just one root. So I can move it up. Till the vertex sits on the x axis, or just before it actually, because when it sits on the x axis, that's just one root. So it needs to be just before it. So if I, oh, whoops, hold on. There. So I'm faffing about with a vertex, and if I'm on the vertex, I'm on completing the square now. So my x squared plus 4x plus k, if I put it in completed the square form, now what I'm saying is that the y value of the vertex, so that's going to be minus 2 comma minus 4 plus k, that y value has to be less than 0. So the y value of the vertex must be less than zero. Because otherwise, if it equals zero, boing, I've got a repeated root. So it has to be down there somewhere. So the vertex, the y value of the vertex, has to be negative. So my minus four plus k must be less than zero. So k must be less than four. So that's another solution I've got. So what I need to do is put them two solutions together. So put them together. I've got k is less than 4, 
and I've got k is greater than zero. So I need to put zero less than k oh, less than four. So I'm just giving you a thumbs up for something for that enrichment. So I've got zero to four there. And that'll work there. I can't remember if we've done certain notation yet. It's all a bit of a blur. Well, that kind of works for that question. I'm hoping that that's the last question we have to do on this. Oh, there is a question for you on the other side, which I think we can have a look at in class if you want. And there's some consolidation questions. So this is our start off of doing it at home. So the idea, I mean, I'm doing a lot of wittering, and I'll do recapping class as well, but you watch the vids, and at home, and we do the consolidation in class. It should make it easier for us. Okay. Right, bye-bye. I'm going on some dinner now. I'm starving. <laughs>